Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com, and today we're going to be going over a hand that I played in a $1,000 buy-in tournament. Here we have Ace-King in the cutoff pretty early in the day. We are playing 100-225 with 20,000 chip effective stacks, so pretty deep stacked. I make it 500 from the cutoff, which I think is perfectly fine, perfectly standard. Um, not a whole lot to say about that. You could certainly raise a little bit larger to maybe 600. If your opponents are calling stations, maybe you can make it 700 or 800, but... I think in general, a very nice size in this scenario is just make it 500 with a lot with your whole range. Um, that's going to work out well enough for you. So the small blind, a tricky aggressive guy calls, and the big blind, a straightforward player calls. So flop comes ace, queen, 10, one spade, two hearts. So I have top pair, top kicker, a gut shot straight draw, but the board is pretty coordinated. I mean, clearly here I, I lose to ace, queen, ace, 10, king, jack. Pocket tens, um, aces and queens are pretty unlikely. Ace queen is somewhat unlikely. Um, pocket tens, I suppose, is somewhat unlikely as well, just because a lot of people three bet those hands from out of position. But at the same time, early in the tournament, a lot of players do just call them. So should we continuation bet? I think in this spot, we certainly can continuation bet for value. Anyone with an ace is going to call. Although, really, if you're sitting here out of position with a hand like ace seven, you should probably consider folding. But at the same time, I, I don't think anyone's folding that for one bet. Also, everyone's going to call with king-queen, queen-jack, king-10, jack-10, etc. So there's certainly value to be had. Pot 1,700, I bet 900. I would probably prefer a bigger bet in general. Just because I think everyone's going to call 1,200 and you can get value. So only the straightforward player in the big blind calls. And the turn is an 8. So now, you always want to ask yourself, what can continue calling if I bet again? And how will my opponent react if I bet again? So in this scenario, if I bet and my opponent has a hand like ace five, will he call or will he fold? And I think in general, most players are just going to fold those hands to bets. So we're not getting very many value or very much value from an ace in this spot. So I'm not in love with that. If our opponent has ace jack or ace nine, he will certainly call again. The thing is, though, is that I very clearly lose to ace-10 and ace-8, and those hands are just never going to fold. So I'm not really getting a ton of value from the aces. So now, am I going to get called by the draws, like a, a flush draw or a hand like jack-10? And I think I probably still will, so I think there's a bit of merit in betting. Given this player is straightforward, I think we should be a little bit more inclined to bet because against players like this, you can bet the turn with the intention of folding if you get raised. And this is a concept that doesn't really apply so much in high stakes, but it certainly does in small stakes or against very honest players. Because when you bet and they call, they're going to have a lot of hands that you beat. And whenever you bet and they raise, they're going to have a lot of hands that beat you. So I think this is close. I, I don't know what I did in this spot, but I certainly would not fault myself for checking. I think this is a very good spot to check versus a generic player with the intention of calling on most rivers. A lot of people get afraid of checking in this spot, thinking that if I check, I let them outdraw me and they, it's almost like they assume they're going to get outdrawn every time whenever they check behind on the turn and that's certainly not the case because if your opponent's sitting here with ace seven well he's drawing nearly dead and he's going to think he has a good hand on the river he may value bet the river or he may check with the intention of calling it when you bet the river if i did check behind the turn i would definitely bet on most reasonable rivers um rivers not to bet if i check behind on the turn are going to be a jack a queen maybe a queen's okay um ten's also pretty marginal a nine is not so good. Any heart's bad. And really, if you think about it, a seven, six, five, four, three, and two are all not amazing as well because a lot of people will fold out hands like a six when the river's a seven, but they will obviously never fold with two pair. So um, we have to be a little bit cautious going to the river if we do check behind. So I I'm okay with either play in this spot, but I think given I have my opponent labeled as straightforward, I probably should have bet. But this time I did just check. So the river is an interesting card, seven of hearts. My opponent checks, and again, I have to ask myself, can I get value from very many hands? And also, what what chance will my opponent bet with on the river? So if he's sitting here with a hand like ace seven, will he lead the river or will he just check, fearing that he could be against the flush? And it's always difficult to know how your opponents will play, but if you pay attention to what they're doing, you'll get the vibe that some players will pretty much always bet with their two pairs, or your opponents will only bet with hands they perceive to be incredibly nut heavy. So we always want to ask yourself, how will my opponent play his hands that beat me? 
And if he's checking some of them, like say he'll check with two pair on the river, fearing you could have a flush or a straight, well, then value betting your ace-king becomes much worse. If you instead think he's always going to bet every hand that beats you every two pair, well, then value betting is pretty much completely free because he is going to check every hand that you beat. or every, Yeah, he's going to check every hand that you beat, which will allow you to value bet very confidently. So this is another spot where I could go either way, depending on what my opponent's doing with his whole range. A lot of people will just check with everything in this spot, looking to check raise with their flushes. Um, this guy is straightforward, so maybe that's not the case. But um, I, again, I could go either way. But you really want to ask yourself these questions. How will my opponent play each portion of his range? Uh, this time I did check behind. Again, it seems a little bit cautious to me looking at it now, but I, I don't think it's too ridiculous just to play somewhat cautiously when the board runs out pretty nasty. So my opponent did have ace-jack, the hand that I just happened to have pipped, right? And anytime you're in this scenario, you always have to ask yourself, well, could I have gotten value? But at the same time, we're not trying to get value from exactly ace-jack, right? I want to ask, can I get value from ace three? Can I get value from king queen? And I imagine I probably could have gotten one more street of value from a lot of those hands. The problem is, is that I have to go about getting the value in different ways. So against king queen, I need to bet the turn because he's always going to fold the river, very often going to fold the river. But against ace three, I need to check behind on the turn because he could likely fold to a turn bet because that hand has relatively little equity against all my made hands, whereas king queen does have some equity. Kind of interesting that a lot of players will check call the turn with king-queen, but check full with ace-three. And that's just because king-queen has the extra draw. Um, anyway, though, I, I think that I probably missed a little bit of value in this spot, but at the same time, I certainly don't fault myself for it. And in tournaments, there's a lot of value in just not playing big pots, and this is a clear way to not play a big pot. That doesn't necessarily apply so much early in the tournament because your main goal early in the tournament is to just maximize your um, the, the amount of chips you can win, not necessarily conserve your stack or anything like that but at the same time you don't want to be just blasting off every single time with top pair top kicker notice what a lot of amateurs do in this spot is they just bet the flop bet the turn and then bet the river with ace king and when you do that you are pretty much always going to be beat when you get called on the river so do not make that error this is a spot where you can definitely bet the flop and then either bet the turn or the river and this time i decided to do neither and probably left a little bit of value on the table but Again, I'm okay with it. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching this here on Poker News. If you have any comments or suggestions, definitely let me know. I will talk to you next week.